<laughs> just jumped at the screen. I wanted to make sure I was on the right internet and it went live on me. Hey guys, <laughs> good morning. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. That had to look really funny. Okay, I'm live and I'm here. It's not Wednesday, it's Friday. Uh, this week has been upside down all over and quite the whirlwind and I will be very honest, I am whooped, I am tired, I'm spent, I'm done. But we're going to do this anyway. Good morning, Miss Courtney. Good morning, Krista Joe. Hey, girl. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Oh, you guys are making my day. So, as I was just saying, I'm spent, I'm done, I'm toast, but I know you guys will renew me, so this is good. That's why I'm here. Uh, this week has been extremely consuming. Uh, rattled my health a little. Good morning, Miss Tammy. We had some really awesome, awesome stuff going on here uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I can't tell you about it right now, but when I can, you guys will be the first to know. Um, but it was very, very draining and consuming, but I do believe that it will be very well worth it. Um, we shall see. <laughs> but... Um, we have a large prayer list. I would just like to ask you guys to keep the mountain man in your prayers. He is more spent than I am, and uh, he could just use some some prayers. Mountain boy, he's resilient. He's resilient. He's actually out um, doing some training for a job, so that's really cool. And I'm going to take you guys up to the she cave in a little bit because they may come back and be sitting at the table doing some training so that way they have their space and I have mine and we don't have to do any shuffling. But I wanted to show you guys something. I know I've talked about it before, but there is something to be said about simple pleasures. You know I'm downsizing, you know I'm minimizing, you know I don't like clutter. But I do like treasures, I do like old things, and it was this was really funny. Hey, good morning Mr. Pat, how are you? I hope you're doing well and feeling good today. Um, we were out at a friend's helping him, and he actually has blessed us also. He has offered us a 40-foot 18-wheeler uh, box to enable us to have a place to store our belongings if things go upside down and sideways fast. So that is really awesome. Courtney, thank you for the prayers for the mountain man. And Pat, I am celebrating that for you, uh, for both you and Mark. I've been following Mark's journey. Um, for those of you um, that have been praying for Pat, this is the Pat. Um, he's doing really good on his current treatments and I'm real excited about that. He's a special man. So we were out and we were at this property and um, there was a dump, mind you, and I found a treasure in the trash. Is that not the cutest thing ever? And you know what's really funny? I have had this sitting on the windowsill. This is actually really cute too. It's an old treasure that I've had, and while we were there, I saw this little kettle upside down and sideways, all dirty, and I envisioned this plant in that pot. Now look at this. It has a little lip on it. You see the little lip on there? It's a little like little pottery piece. This is tricky. My both hands are not working together. Can you see that? <laughs> it's the blonde. <laughs> anyway, look at how that fits. It touches that little lip fits right on this rim and that just ensured me that that was meant for me and my windowsill and the orange and the purple and the green all go together I'm super excited about that so it's the simple things in life sometimes the simple pleasures and sometimes even when you're downsizing and minimizing sometimes you just need that thing that's going to put an extra smile on your face and that certainly did. So I just thought I would share that with you because, you know, throughout our days, we need to look for those simple pleasures, the blessings, because life throws us all kinds of extremely crazy stuff. We're all dealing with oddities and crazy things. And we need to keep seeking those little things that are going to put an extra smile on our face and take us to a different place. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to flip this around. Okay, and I just realized I brought my iPad down so I could uh, invite those people that can't find us quickly 
So let me do that. So how are all of you guys doing? Also, good morning, Terry. I see you just jumped on there. Um, thank you, Tammy. Yes, I love it too. It just, it just made me smile. And he just thought I was nuts because I was picking it out of the trash. I found other treasures too, which I will share with you at another time because I'm in the middle of turning, uh, I don't want to say trash into a treasure, um, but uh, let's say um, something not so pretty into something pretty. How's that? For lack of better terms, forgive me. All right, bear with me a second here. Um, while I invite these folks on and tell me guys, how are you doing? How can we be praying for you? Um, do you have others that we could be praying for? Uh, let us know because I'm going to share some big prayer requests with you in just a second. Um, and what are your celebrations? That's also really important. You know, in life, it's short, it's crazy, and we need to remember to uh, celebrate when we can. All right, that's done. Now, okay. All right. I am going to venture up into the she cave. So bear with me. I'll try not to move too fast. Ah, I have something else I want to show you. You know how I've been working on my basket? It's a little dark in here, but I think you'll be able to see. I've got my next layer on, and then I'm going to start these stitches again and the handle will be getting incorporated and put on there. So figure about another inch of uh, basket and then the handle. So that is one of the things I've been working on in the evenings. That is made out of pine needles, just so you know. Ah, well thank you, Pat. Yes, now we just gotta find the right person to enjoy it. We are enjoying it while we are here, that is for sure. I, I certainly am. I am so grateful for the Mountain Man's crafty handiwork, and it is such a pleasure to be able to enjoy it. Okay, bear with me here. We're gonna jiggle and rattle around here. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, give me a second. I'm sitting on things. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so bear with me today. Like I said, uh, these last couple days have been tough. Uh, I am feeling the effects and trying to function here. Okay, so oh, I gotta take a deep breath here. That's what the last three days have been like. We have been, we were being shot out of a cannon every every day from like eight o'clock on, and when we, we thought we were finished. An hour later, we were doing the same thing again. It was quite crazy. Like I said, I can't share all the details. I would love to, but I will share them when I can. All right, now, good morning, Sherry. Glad to have you joining me. And she says, beautiful work. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Terry says, please pray that God won't let me give up. Oh, you got it, my friend. Um, good morning, Charles. Good morning, Charles. He's saying hello to everyone as well. Tammy's praying for Terry. Guys, um, as far as the prayer requests go, I would really like to request that you do pray for Terry and his wife, June. Please be lifting them on a regular basis and help them. God is certainly um, answering our prayers in tremendous ways. Um, he is working miracles, and like I've said to you many, many times, good morning, Janet. I love this seat. I love... Um, what, what God is doing here and how God has placed me in this position um, and he guides me and gifts me with the right words every week when we communicate but that I get to see you guys reach out to me and you share things with me and we pray for you and I get to see how things are coming to fruition and how God is working and it is something that is inspiring me um, beyond recognition. It is it is just unbelievable. I can't even put it into words what I have been seeing. And it's just a really amazing thing. And that's why I asked for prayers for the mountain man because it's really hard right now because he is in such a low place. We've been in this position for such a long time. And it wears on me too, but I have found such great strength and 
peace and comfort through through God and not that he's not seeking it either but um, I guess what it is is I've been blessed with tools and um, experiences that have taken me to the opposite end of the spectrum so it's really hard because he's in a really low place and I am in a really high place I'm tired as all get out but it, it's a hard place to be and it's it's hard to also be in a place where I am really in a high place and I can't help him other than through prayer so it's a really difficult place to be and I get his his place and his his um, frustration because um, we are close to the change in season it is really um, you know if we put a lot of thought into that and and take our minds away from just trusting God and a lot of people will say you're foolish you should be moving on and thinking of things and, and and doing all this stuff but we're in a place where we can't anyway financially we can't make the purchases and the things that we need to right now so I'm not wasting any headspace on that like I told you guys last week so I am making great effort to stay above this craziness good morning Janet good morning Kelly um, and and I found coping mechanisms and tools that are helping me to keep me redirected so that's what I thought we would talk about today also and also just knowing when enough is enough when you are wiped out tired and spent there is nothing wrong with just stopping and resting we think we've got to keep pushing on and we've got to keep pushing and we got to you know keep doing what we're supposed to do but the truth is that stuff will wait and we need to take care of ourselves and we need to know when our bodies are telling us enough is enough and I am I am there I washed dishes this morning I'm going live with you guys today and I'm doing casual things today but I I know that my body is telling me that it's time to just chill and I'm gonna listen to it and I've learned through the process of the last three years that that's a really important thing to do so um, if you would pr please lift the mountain man I would greatly appreciate it good morning sorry computer was updating no worries I'm glad you are here you'll have to watch the beginning to see my new little treasure because I know you'll like it too um, so I want to share with you some of the things that have been happening um, and some of the, the amazing things God has been doing um, last week when I put the video our live video on YouTube a fellow named Jason said, oh boy, do I need prayers. I had um, ketoacidic and septic. Now, um, and, and he nearly died. Uh, I don't think that I pronounced that right, but he said he's been in the hospital for a month and just needs to feel Jesus' love for him right now. So prayer, and he said prayers for all. Um, so I didn't get a chance to share this with you, but we have been lifting him in prayer and... Uh, this is pretty cool yesterday he messaged and he said I just wanted to say thank you for the prayers I've had a dramatic transformation they were going to redo and repack my wounds which was always painful and I was filled with fear the woman who did this was always rough and caused me pain but this time she stopped and asked me if I wanted a pillow behind my leg they got the job done quickly and almost pain-free later I realized it was like he had his arms around me the whole time shortly after I was told I qualified for financial aid physical therapy and temporary disability I've been up walking and sitting in my chair I can't thank uh, everybody enough for their prayers especially to Jesus's healing hand I could say so much more but I'm pooped thank you so you know our prayers you know I don't think people put a lot of weight and value on on the amazingness of, of a prayer and you know many people struggle with well how do I pray you know and it's just basically having a conversation with a friend or a father figure if you will and that's that's how I view it I've told you guys before I walk around my house talking to him all the time um, outside you know uh, it's a constant thing for me and I love that and I do feel his closeness and that's really important in my life but for people like this and, and and many of you that are walking through different things as I know many of you are um, it's a really priceless feeling to see those changes and to feel God's peace and comfort and presence and um, you know when we don't feel that that does not mean he's not there uh, so 
there is such power in prayer and I just want to encourage you guys to embrace that and um, also lift these people. Um, another thing that we've been praying for is um, Linda had messaged me a couple weeks ago and um, told me about Terry, that he uh, was in the ICU. He also had a um, blood bacteria and um, almost died also. He was in the ICU and he was in really rough shape. And she is just praising God because uh, he is on the mend and he is out of ICU and um, was actually able to hold his baby this afternoon. He has a seven-month-old baby. So, you know, what a great feeling to you know, be in that seat where you were close to death and now are seeing God's hand and presence. So, you know, I love it when people reach out and ask for prayer. That's really humbling and very powerful. And what's even more powerful is that you guys embrace it too. So I'm really thankful for that. Now, last week I shared with you that uh, YouTuber Andrea Mills was pregnant with her 10th child and in the hospital with cancer in her liver and her gallbladder and the doctor's felt that it spread somewhere else. Um, she passed away last week with the baby and honestly um, knowing the uh, just what that would have been like for her uh, it would have been a really tough place to be carrying a child and dealing with that and um, I, I have seen the uh, horrible horrible effects of cancer and I, I'm just thankful that God took her peacefully and uh, I would like to just ask that you guys continue to keep praying for her family though because that's got to be extremely rough leaving nine children behind in a, and uh, for what the father is going to have to tend to and just the loss of her so please keep them in your prayers uh, that's just such such a terrible terrible thing um, and keep Mona and Ken in your prayers and uh, continue to pray for Pat and his son-in-law Mark. They're both dealing with uh, cancer treatment right now and uh, progressing well. So that is a, a huge celebration. And uh, Sherry, let me see here. Terry says, praying for the mountain man. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see. Kelly says, I took a few days off after all the chicken canning back to uh, back to making relish and canned coleslaw today. I'm glad you took some time off. Girl, you were pushing hard. But that's fantastic. Your shelves will be full. Um, Sherry says, praying you and your mount for you and your mountain man. God knows exactly what he needs. I know it's hard to see your man so down. Been there. Let me see if I can see the rest of it. That darn see more button is fighting. Let me see if I can see it on here. And Kelly says, left husband and children behind praying for them. Yeah, it's really, really hard. I can't, I can't, ima I can't imagine that. But, um, let me see here. I gotta turn the volume off here. Um, let's see if it'll let me see the comments so I can, ha, huh, there we go. Oh, it's fighting with me too. But thank you. I appreciate that, um, Sherry. Sometimes when the messages are long, it doesn't let me see them all. So it fights with me. Okay, Terry. Um, but it's, it's important that we understand the power of prayer. It's really huge. But also knowing when to say enough is enough. You know, we, we all tend to push ourselves pretty hard. We all tend to feel that if we aren't moving or doing something that we're either lazy or unproductive or worthless. There's many negative derogatory things we're saying to ourselves in our head because we aren't able to do what we want to do. But has it ever occurred to any of you that God has put you in that position for a reason? I, it really took me didn't take me super long, but it took me a while to realize that God was using me in the position that I was when I was flat on my back for almost a year. So God has a way of using us when we are on our knees and when we are um, in our lowest places. And we need to sometimes just acknowledge the fact that maybe uh, he's placed us in this position because we are have been ignoring his nudges to take better care of ourselves or that he's trying to work and we're interfering, you know. So 
all these things can play a role, but we need to learn to just be okay with resting, with taking a break, with um, needing to walk away from things, uh, accepting failure. Sometimes we fail in things. And, you know, that's one of the things that tends to happen to the mountain man when he gets in a low place is things start breaking. And I can see it. I can see the progression of it and the process of it. And um, he, he has learned to step away and to just let things uh, cool down. But those are things that we need to learn. And oftentimes we just keep pushing through. Tammy says, please pray for Brandon, my oldest son. He injured his ankle at work yesterday and is trying to nurse it back to health. I'm trying that see more button. Okay, Tammy, we will be playing, praying for Brandon. We also need to pray for Tammy. Um, her daughter is moving off the homestead and her son-in-law and grandchild, so um, that's always a hard experience. I know the mountain boy will be moving on here soon, um, hopefully to embrace a very big future venture, which will be hard for he and I. Um, we kind of are uh, pretty connected, so. But pray for Tammy, uh, pray for Alexis and um, uh, Benjamin, and uh, we have quite the prayer list, too. I'd like to go over that real quick and um, just make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. And like I said, if you have prayers or know somebody that needs prayers, please don't hesitate to um, put that in the comments below or reach out to me um, privately. Okay, I just realized that in the um, notes below, the prayer list is not, so I will put that in there to, uh, when we're done here, but I can go back here and look at it. Ooh, this is fighting with me. All right. Well, I will list the prayers, the prayer list um, later in the, in the comments below so you guys can check that. I know I will have a t hard time with them moving, but it is a blessing for them. I know exactly. Uh, I feel the same way about Austin. I'm like so super excited for him. Uh, and he's excited, you know, so all we can do again is pray for them, pray for for their success in their ventures and you know the beautiful thing is today's technology we can keep in touch in a very great way we have FaceTime Skype and all those great things as well as texting and phone calls so there's so many options so we can keep in touch but it's neat to see our kids grow wings it's neat to see them venture out and he's overdue this has been a long time coming so um, feeling big wind, winds of change and uh, just praying that God sells this place for us before winter sets in. Uh, we've had lots of people coming to look at it. It's just going to take that that right person. Um, and I'm, I've been thanking God in my prayers for already selling it because I know that he's going to take care of that. It's his timing that everybody struggles with, right? I know I'm not the only one. You know, waiting on God's timing can be very, very difficult. Uh, but if we keep seeking Him and focusing on Him, it enables us to find a peace. There is peace in His Word. And I want to share a book with you guys today. You guys have got to get your hands on this. If I recall correctly, it's only $2.99 on Amazon, but you also might be able to find it in your library. Um, this man was uh, born in 1898, uh, and he was way ahead of his time. Uh, Jill shared the book with me. And I had mentioned that it was an awesome book, but then realized that it wasn't the same book that I thought it was. So I started reading it, and oh my goodness, this man is just so ahead of his time. And, and it is called The Power of Positive Thinking. So by going to treyerwilderness.com slash power of positive, you will find this book. I'll put the link uh, down below. But I highly encourage you guys to pick up that book. And like I've been saying, um, you know, and I said it last week, we have a choice to end up where we end up. Although it can be really hard sometimes that we get to really low places that it's hard for us on our own 
to get back out of that place, even when we're talking to God. So that's the beauty of having prayer warriors at your resources and at your fingertips, that you can contact them for additional prayer because it's kind of like um, a winch or a hoist, if you will. You know, you might be in that low place on your knees, but you recruit those prayer warriors and it, it just starts bringing you up. It's an amazing thing. And I, I feel very blessed to have that and have those resources at my fingertips. And you guys do too if you don't realize it because everyone that is joining us today, they are tremendous prayer warriors. And when we share prayers here, I know that they go places. Um, but the other thing is when you start feeling yourself heading in that negative direction, um, there have been a couple books that I have read lately that have really forced me and taken me to this place. One of which is This Present Darkness, which is by Frank Peretti. I think I shared that last week. You can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Frank Peretti. A fabulous book. Fabulous book on spiritual warfare. It's a novel, but it is, it is, it opens your eyes and really helps uh, you realize um, sometimes why you end up in the places that you end up or what is what is taking you to that place and the enemy okay my house is gonna break loose uh, Austin's back so they're gonna start barking. the old man's gonna bark and the only thing he hears is the vibration of a clap so it's quite something when I'm out in the woods and have to start clapping anyway Hopefully it won't be too bad. Good girl, Mrs. Let's see here. Uh, Shelly says, I'm reading that now. It's an addicting book, and so is his next one is really awesome as well. Um, he's a great author. But it was a real eye-opener for me when I read that book. It really helped me to be a little bit more in tune with the things going on around me. And... Um, <laughs> Kelly says... Are you oh, gosh. She is so loud. Copper. Hey, watch my cord and no. Stay here. Stay here. Copper. It's just going to get out of hand because I can't be down there to reprimand them, so it's just going to be loud. Um, so now Kelly's dogs are barking also. All right, hang on a second. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, welcome to my zoo. All the animals are out of their cages. <laughs> okay, trying to remember where I was here. Um, but I was talking about redirecting. And um, that has been a saving grace. I have not been in this place like this on a consistent basis where I can keep myself in this place and where I can... Um, have the tools and the resources and the know-how to pull myself out of these out of low places that set in and um, the enemy has a field day when we get into that low place because he he wants to keep us there him and his minions and you know I don't know if everybody believes in all that kind of stuff but it is a reality and when you're in a place like we are right now where it's been a, a long time and a grueling situation he just looks for all kinds of little opportunities. The same applies if you're sick or you're maybe going through marital issues or financial issues. He looks for openings. And um, it's just like this really, I have to share this picture later. I will share a picture with you. This has become my like power, my, my uh, power picture. Um, I will, it, I'll share it with you later. It's a picture. No, I can't. It's not on this machine. Maybe I can. Hang on a second. Um, but anyway, while I'm looking for that, when we have the ability to pull ourselves out of these places and redirect ourselves, be in tune and be able to discern what's happening, um, because 
I know you can all very much so agree that negative things start setting in our brain. You know, just as an example, somebody, a good friend uh, hurts you or, um, you know, you had, you, you had, you were doing really good financially and all of a sudden, you know, the truck breaks down and you've got to invest all this money and you're right back where you started. You know, these, these negative things set in and, and, and the enemy likes just popping those things back in your head and trying to drag you down. And it is, it, it, it can be a common occurrence and we don't realize it. We just start hearing it then we start thinking further about it and keep thinking more about it and get deep into our thoughts and end up in a bad place. It's a progression. Okay, can you guys see that and can you read it? There's a glare. I love that picture. Miss Diana shared that. She's not on here today. She must be busy. But um, she shared this with me the other day. And that is what I envision now. I just love that. It says, how I feel knowing Jesus is with me when I face battles. I absolutely love that. Um, this is from uh, Narnia, uh, the C.S. Lewis movie. And I can picture Aslan right next to me. I'm totally good with that. Just as a way to <laughs> redirect myself when I'm like battling with the enemy. But I want to encourage you guys because I know how fast it happens. I know his tactics and this world is a crazy place right now. And the reason I titled it too, um, you know, Enough is Enough is because that applies in a bunch of different ways. One, you know, we keep pushing ourselves, keep pushing ourselves and tire ourselves out and allow us to get to this place of doom and gloom. And that is just something that I am refusing to allow myself to get to. If I get tired, I lay down, I take a nap, I try to rest my head, I try to, um, I don't try to, I focus on God's word every morning and really um, make it a point to pay attention to what kind of of things I'm allowing into my head and and that has been something that over the last month I've been really concentrating on and really paying attention to after reading these books that I've been reading and you know we have that ability and and we don't realize it and that's why I want to share it with you good morning Tamara glad to have you joining me um, what happens is those negative thoughts come in and we could easily and instantly stop them, redirect, go to a pleasant place, redirect our attention to something else. Oftentimes it's when we are in um, a monotonous job that, you know, those negative thoughts will come in. So walk away from that job for a while, do something different. I have been really delving into creative aspects in my life. I shared with you guys the Skillshare last week. That is a fabulous place. And even if you only use it for the two months that are free, uh, the art class that I'm taking is a two month, it's an eight week class. So I don't, I won't have to spend any more money because I don't have it right now. And I didn't spend any to start with, but I mean, I won't have to spend any money to continue doing anything at a later date and time when we're in a different place. I can, I can start that back up again. If I want to take uh, painting classes or computer classes or anything, there are thousands and what are you doing? You're going to knock my machine down. You want to come close. Lay down. I've got a cord here, and she's like crawling underneath it. What, you just want to be seen? Partner in crime everywhere I go. Don't knock my machine down, okay? Lay down. Um, the Skillshare, you guys can join. It's two months free. There's thousands and thousands of courses, and no matter what your age is, it's always an amazing thing to learn new things. There's writing classes, there's art classes, there's pencil art classes, um, watercolor, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, did you see that George? Good morning George. She's everywhere. She's everywhere I am. Which is good. She's a good protector, but she's funny. Um, to get involved in Skillshare, you can just go to treyerwilderness.com slash Skillshare and sign up. It is a free 
free program for two months. After that, I think it's $15 a month, which isn't that expensive for the type of classes that are on there. I am thoroughly impressed. I've never seen such a great art class before. This guy is really good. And I've actually got some projects that I'm working on, and I am really excited. Um, his class has made me look at things very differently um, when it comes to drawing things. So I am just so stoked because I've always done black ink and different things, but I want to expand. I'm also doing uh, jewelry. The uh, Idaho is a gem state. So there are actually rocks on my walks that are usable to be cut and slivered and made into uh, jewelry. Yes, Terry, that's another great one. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, they do. And that would be awesome for you. They do have photography classes. Lots of them. Lots and lots of them. Movie classes. Um, gaming classes to learn how to make games um, for, your, for your kids. There's so much stuff out there. Um, I would highly recommend just checking it out. I, I can't tell you how many classes they have. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it covers every possible topic. Cooking, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I dove in because of the art classes, but there is so, so much accessible. And because it's free for two months, dive in. You can take and utilize as many classes as you want. The art classes I'm taking are 15, 20 minute classes at a time and you can work at your own pace so you can either you know work ahead uh, go go slowly so that you're learning it I'm actually able to go ahead a little bit um, I want to try to learn as much as I can and maybe even go back and do it again so anyway delve into that do something creative do something fun that is how you can keep yourself from getting into the humdrum and, and the negative places that life sometimes takes you, is being creative. And like I've told you guys many uh, lives back, that abundance is what holds many of us back. We have too much abundance around us. When we finally have some free time to do something, we have too many choices, too many options, and we're overwhelmed. You start a project, you never finish it because you jump to something different. Because we are just, I really feel consumed with abundance. So, that's why I was suggesting to declutter because I cannot believe the peace, the comfort, the simplicity, the enjoyment, the joy I get out of my home. And also how much creativity it has spiked in me to do different things. Writing, I've been doing a lot of writing. Um, but to get back involved in the things that I enjoy doing. Uh, once I am done with my basket downstairs, I'm probably going to work on a knitting project and then start, after that's finished, start another basket. Um, I have a couple things that I need to make for uh, my kitchen, so that's why I want to do some knitting. And I also want to, in wintertime, work on some socks. Uh, so it makes it nice to be able to jump around and be able to work on different things. But we are planning to, once we are out of this place, and even if we are not blessed with the sale of this home before winter, that God has other plans for us, we are going to start diving into the things we love the most. The mountain man is going to start making his furniture again, mortise and tenon furniture. He's going to start blacksmithing. So very soon, time permitting for me, that I get all of our items on our store, we are going to start really marketing our things. In addition to that, I'm going to start painting on um, animal bones. I know that sounds crazy, but I save the shoulder bones, which are a very big bone from the animals, and I'm doing black ink on them. I'm doing jewelry. I might start doing my candles again, um, and my soaps, and uh, I'm working on some leather projects as well, and I think I said my jewelry. So being able to do what you love is also a really important thing. So many of us are stuck in jobs, or so we feel that we don't care for and don't like and there's things we enjoy doing but we're afraid to take that step so all of these things are what keep us in a good place they keep us in a positive place they keep us in a place that we are actually nurturing ourselves versus um, constantly just beating our head against a wall so it's important that we realize that we are able to control so much more in our lives than we give ourselves credit for you know, we feel that we're stuck in these places and we have abilities to pull ourselves out of these places and make changes. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. 
Shelly says, or look at the mess abundance causes and get frustrated. Yeah, frustration and anger can be a really good tool to get you out of places. If you're in that spot, use that to fuel your fire to get rid of the stuff, right? Shelly is the organization and decluttering queen. She has been doing that since the beginning of the year. Were you doing it last year too, or did you start real heavily the beginning of this year? Time is flying so fast. I cannot believe we are in September next week. Gosh, that's just crazy to me. It goes too fast. But yeah, there are things that we can do in our day to day and in our lives to force us to make changes. Sometimes we need those places of frustration and anger um, to push us out of our places. Um, but I am just, I feel so extremely blessed to be in a place where I am able to just stay in my place of joy and hold on tight to that. Um, and like, like I've said, it's a process. It took me a long time to get to this place. And like I've told you before, please don't be intimidated by my level of faith, by my level of uh, confidence in, in, in my faith. Because I haven't always been here. It has been a progressive life journey to get here. But what I have learned, I'm trying to share with you guys so it doesn't take you 49 years to get to this place. Because it is an amazing place to be. And when you learn that you have more control over your life, your day-to-day, -day, um, your future, uh, you really get pretty excited and uh, want to stand firm in that place. Okay, let me see here. Shelly says, more heavily this year, going through paperwork right now. Good, that means you're resting and, and not pushing yourself too hard. And Kelly says, praying for a long autumn before winter hits. We're still working on wood supply and garden bless, uh, blessings. Awesome. I hear that. We are going to start harvesting our firewood. You know, we've held off because our woodshed has probably, I don't know, six or eight cord in it. But the mountain man likes to keep that full. That is one of his passions. Um, it holds about 13 cord. And we've held off on that because we didn't want to fill the woodshed entirely and, and do all that work because we don't buy it. We go out and we do all the hard work. So we've held off on that. Um, and we're intending to do that at our next location. But because things are getting so late in the season, we are going to start doing that. And of course, whoever purchases this will have to um, put some money out for the amount of firewood that's there. Because if they'd have to pay for it, it would be pretty hefty. Um, so we should get some compensation for that. But it'll give him a great deal of peace um, to be able to have that woodshed full. And that is part of his struggle too. Um, men and women think differently and you know we need to uh, be aware of that and be able to help our spouses um, when we go through different struggles, different things and also be in tune to understand that uh, we think differently. You know he feels a lot of pressure um, with the things that he's responsible for and I totally get that. I feel pressure from the things I'm responsible for. Um, so. And we handle that pressure very differently. Uh, that pressure fuels my fire. Like, uh, I think it was Kelly or Shelly that said it, Shelly. Um, you know, to, to, to take that abundance and that frustration and that anger and use it forward. Well, when I have pressure, it really pushes me forward. It really makes me get in a groove. Where for him, that pressure just uh, gets heavy, really heavy and very hard on him. So as a family, you know, we, we're going to gather together, we're going to get out there, and we're going to get firewood. Uh, that'll help his state of mind and his struggle right now. So, you know, when you, when you can read each other, your family members, and understand how they function, how they, how they tick, you know, instead of making life harder for them because maybe you don't understand, you can make life easier for them because you are in tune. And that's what makes our life out here. Um, something that's really good for all of us because we really work very well together. Um, that isn't always the case. Uh, different personalities, you know, don't always work, you know, well together. Uh, we've, we've worked very hard to uh, 
blend. Uh, Tammy says, we'll still need to put up at least five cord. Yeah, so you know that kind of work that's involved. It, gets, it can be pressuring. Um, Kelly says, yes, we try to keep a year's supply ahead, and after the couple last couple years, we've not been able to get that totally done. Yeah, and you know, the benefit of having that stuff is just like our food pantry. Um, when you have excess firewood, just suppose something happens. Somebody, you know, had it been him three years ago that ended up flat on his back, that would have meant that um, I would have been responsible for getting firewood. I can do it. It's a lot of work. It's, it's, a man, it's a man's job, and I don't mean that to discredit any women. Women can do it, but we are built different. And there are certain positions and certain lifting that is not easy for a woman. It doesn't mean we can't do it. It doesn't mean I don't do it. But what I'm saying is it's a blessing and a gift that he is able to do it and that he likes to do it because um, it can be hard on a woman's body. We are not made the same. But um, when we work together, you know, that's what makes it really nice. And having that extra wood on hand that if something were to happen, you know, you're not out there foraging firewood in the middle of winter. We've had to do that already. Our first year here, we didn't have any time to get firewood, so we were fetching trees when we needed them. And that's that's not a fun way to do things. It's so much nicer when you have the security of that full firewood shed. So, again, that security gives him peace, and that's what we're going to work on. Um, my food stash gives me security and we are dwindling that down but I am trusting God you know things are going to all work out and it's like I've been saying too um, you know Jesus feeding 5,000 with uh, the few fish and few loaves of bread that they had you know I keep feeling like my freezer is this endless uh, <laughs> pit that he just keeps putting more in there because I don't know where it's coming from. I know it's low. So, and of course, hunting season is around the corner. But it's just crazy, you know, um, to just see those blessings, see that God is providing, see that we are blessed, and, and being content in that. Um, let me see here. Shelly says, you need to have some stuff in case. It is so hard to know what to do when your life is in, in the balance. Yeah, you know, um... Not, you know, we've held off on doing things because if it did sell, it wouldn't have benefited us. It would have been extra work and um, we were already, you know, depleting ourselves trying to get the house done. So, you know, in stages and, and you know what, you roll with it, you go with it and you make things happen when you need to. Uh, but the thing is learning to take care of yourself through this process, and that's why today is called Enough is Enough. You know, sometimes you just need to throw up your hands and say, you know what, I'm done. And and realizing that you're in a place of tiredness that you need to just step back and rest. It's all good. Kelly says, each sex has God-given strengths, and we are designed to complement one another. Amen. And you know what, when you learn to fine-tune that and you do complement each other, it is fantastic it is like a well-oiled machine and then to get your kids incorporated into that it's just it's an impressive um, thing when you can operate that way and and you know being willing to pray for your spouse when they are struggling instead of getting mad at them you know I could get mad at him at times because he gets honorary and and frustrated and and that but it doesn't solve anything and and I understand that the reason he's there is he's just got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. So rather than reacting to his behavior, and, and you know, I'm using him as, a, as an example, but we're all guilty of it. But when you can pray for your spouse or see that they're in a low place, or even your children, you know, we all go through moments, we all go through different struggles, different things make us tick, different things set us off. You know, we handle pressure different. We we handle everything differently. And when we can kind of get in tune with one another and realize how we can assist one another, um, you know, when I see him struggling, I'm not just going to let him struggle. I'm going to do my best to try to help him. And sometimes the best way for me to help him is to step back and pray for him. Other times is to step in and give him a hand with something. Um, later on, I am going to be helping him install railings on the job he's working on. And um, I know that that will give him peace because that's one less thing on his plate. It's, it's just 
learning, learning how to adapt and overcome, learning how to work together, learning how to bless one another. And that's true of, of strangers too, you know, not just our, our families, but people from our church, people from our town. We have such abilities to not only control how we are, you know, I, it's hard for some people to realize that you have control over yourself, you know, you have the decision and the choice to decide whether you want to be happy, sad, grumpy, you know, we can, we can decide that. But when you see somebody else that's suffering, you also have the ability to bless them and change where they're at because maybe they lost their control or didn't know they had it. So I don't know for what it's worth. This is what uh, has been coming out of me today. This is what, what God instilled in me to share with you. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, because we all get in places. We all get in panic modes when the seasons change, like Kelly said. You know, she's got a lot to do. They've got to try to get their firewood in. Same with Tammy. So, you know, there's pressure on. And it's funny because not everybody lives the way we do. Our guest over the last couple days did not live the way we do. And um, didn't fully understand our way of thinking um, or our way of living. You know, there's... You know, there's so many things that people could do to live a simpler life than we do in the regard of work. But we find our work to be enjoyable and it makes our life simpler in a different way. Like his simple was um, the use of a microwave versus the use of a cast iron skillet or a coffee pot versus a percolator. Um, just as an example. You know, so I enjoy cooking in those things. I enjoy the pleasure of hearing my percolator going and, and using that. Um, it does take a little more work, but it makes, it gives me joy. Just like that tea kettle downstairs gave me joy when I found that. And just the fact that it all fit together with what I intended to use it with, you know. Simple pleasures. And sometimes it can be the simplest of pleasures. I found a heart-shaped rock the other day while I was walking and I showed it to Austin. And he's like, how in the world did you even see that? It was smaller than the tip of my pinky, but it was a perfect heart. And that was just God's little blessing to me personally. You know, somebody else would have walked past it, never saw it. I see those things. I take great pleasure and joy in those things. So seek the good in life. Um, realize that you have more power to your day-to-day, -day, how you think, what you think about, how you live your life, you uh, even the job you 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 work every day, and, and how you spend your spare time. My spare time right now is spent with my mountain man or my mountain boy. It is spent doing things that I am finding great pleasure in uh, either uh, getting back into or starting anew. I highly recommend that you guys read The Power of Positive Thinking. Um, that is, uh, Norman Vincent Peale is the author. I had to think about that. And I just picked, uh, this man I'm telling you is way ahead of his time. The book is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So I encourage you to read that because that will really, really help you when you're in low moments and you need to redirect. Um, I'm thankful for these tools. I'm thankful to stay in a happy place. I am thankful to not be defined by my circumstance and circumstances, and that's what I was sharing with you guys last week. That is an important place to be, is when you are able to be in a place that you are not defined by your illness, by your marital status, by your financial status, that you are able to enjoy life despite the chaos. And that is what I have coined. That's what I'm living. I am living happily through the chaos. And there is a lot of chaos. But I am choosing to be happy. And it makes my day so enjoyable. I get up with a spring in my step instead of dreading what my day might be like. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste my precious time in this world thinking about things I can't control. That is another important thing. Don't give any headspace to things that you have no control over. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your precious time. So dive into Skillshare and learn something new. Read a book. George says that's one of his favorites. Is that not an awesome, awesome book? Oh my goodness. I am just loving it. I am so loving it. Um, let me see here. 
Kelly says I was gifted two oil lamps, old, but in working order, and was thrilled. The cousin's gifting it was taken back by my excitement. <laughs> I love it. That's me too. I get like so super excited about the craziest things and people just think I am nuts. I know that that fellow that was joining us for the last three days thought I was a little nuts at times too because I find things funny when, and, and I try to make things funny. Um, our days were a little grueling the last three days and I was determined to make it fun. So I was being a clown and I don't care what he thought. I had a good time. Anyway, uh, Tammy says oil lamps are wonderful. Yes. They are. And Kelly, thank you for sharing that because, yes, it is the craziest simple pleasures that people um, gift us with. And, and, and that is enjoying life and, and living in the moment and, and just finding joy in the simple pleasures. Shelly says, I was able to get a couple more uh, oil lamps from someone who was moving and they did not want to take them with them. I oh, see more. Come on. That is just the craziest thing. This darn button does not work. Last week it worked one time. So I can't see everything you said there. But oil lamps are awesome. They are awesome to have on hand um, for so many reasons. Uh, I have them lately. I've been lighting tea lights all over my house. I'm going to spin this around and show you something. I did shove my bags over there because I needed to steal a chair. Okay. You see the chimney in the corner? There we go. In the corner of my office. It's metal, and it's made for outside. It's not a super heavy, but on the farm, I burnt candles in it, and I have a candle in it right now. Um, if, I, if my candle burns down, I'll just do a ring of tea lights in there, and I'll tell you what, that gives me such joy when I'm up here writing in the early mornings or in the evening if I feel like coming up here. I do my devotions in front of that. Um, it's just really, really nice. Um, so it's the simple pleasures and it's the things that give us joy and you know this is something else I want to share with you today Whoop. Um, I talked about it a couple times back about how we have these things that we save for that special occasion and that special occasion never comes and these things are never used well I packed all my things up that were in the jelly cupboard. I sold the jelly cupboard. It had my pottery, it had my baskets, it had a lot of my cast iron in there. I picked what I thought I would need for right now, hoping the house would sell soon, and packed everything away. Well, I've been making bread out of a stainless steel bowl, and not that it's a problem. Um, the stainless steel bowl is nice. Um, Austin's gonna be really excited because that's gonna be a simple pleasure and treasure that he's gonna inherit because the other day, um, I decided, you know what, I love making my bread out of my pottery dishes. I love making my baked goods out of my, and mixing them in my pottery dishes. I love seeing my pottery dishes sitting around. The heck with this. I went out, I dug through my totes, I dug out what I needed, and I brought them in. I packed away the stainless steel, and I am getting great pleasure out of using those bowls. But the thing is, there's so many things that we pack away that we want to save and keep nice. And you know what? It's such a waste. It's taken up space. You're not enjoying your life because you're not using it. So I've been getting out um, linens, uh, tablecloths, doilies, whatever. My chimney. That was sitting in the shed for nine years waiting to be used. I used my chimney outside. Now it's too dry to have a fire. This is a funny story. I don't know if I shared the picture of it, but Austin was, I shared with you the devotional. Austin was on a job and the fella had a bunch of things to throw away. And Austin confiscated this. They were going to throw it away. And this has become one of my most favorite devotionals. This is one of Joyce Meyer's um, Love Out Loud. Amazing book. But he, he found that. He saw that and he said, I know my mom's going to like that. Do you mind if I take it? So he took that. And we were up there the same day. Um, the mountain man was felling a tree for the fella. And, and I saw this metal dish, and it was actually what a uh, plant was in it. And I'm like, I just got rid of all my planters. I don't need that. It looked cute. It was scalloped. But I'm like, you know what? No. I only take what I can see I'm going to use. And um, we had stepped away and went and did something, and all of a sudden it dawned on me that that metal bowl or decorative thing could be put out on my deck with a candle in it and, and I could put some heart shaped rocks in it since we can't have a fire at night I can burn my candle out on the porch so I, I got it and you know what that has been giving me such great pleasure 
And when I, I bring it in from outside so it doesn't get rained on and stuff, and we don't have a fire in the fireplace, so I've been setting it on top of the wood stove and lighting my candle in there. I know it sounds quirky to some, but it's a simple pleasure. I love having a fire. George and Pat know we love having our our fires out here, and it gets too dry. So it's just taking in the simple pleasures. Um, I don't want abundance. I'm not getting things that I don't need, but I get if I see something that I can that I have a use for, I will use it. At some point, I'm probably going to gift that that kettle. It might get gifted too, but. I'm getting pleasure out of it and you know that's why I'm telling you to dig out your treasures and use them instead of having them stuck in um, in storage so let me see here you guys let's see Shelly says I'm hoping to have some no power nights by using oil lamps good way to get used to them just in case yes and to save power and it's just so nice that that lighting from the lanterns is just such a nice romantic comfortable glow I love it George says how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie is another good one cool thank you George you know I love I'm starting to delve back in and read some of the classics things I've never read um, the fellow that was joining us the other day mentioned about the um, uh, Oh my goodness, I just went blank. It'll come to me. Um, Kelly says, me too. Love the softness of the lanterns. I wish I could have a wood stove. Yeah, that's a shame that you can't have a wood stove. She is on, uh, Shelly lives on an island and they aren't able to have a wood stove because of the air quality that the wood stoves would create because of the air being stuck there. So that stinks. I could not go without a wood stove. There's just no way. Um, oh, I it keeps going in and out of my head, this book this fellow shared with me. George says, we love sitting around the campfire. Heck yes, and it's going to soon come. We actually had rain last night. Um, so the potential is there that we can soon start having campfires again. It's just so relaxing. I mean, that's one way to really melt down and to just breathe a little de-stress. Um, so much can be achieved around the campfire, right, George? <laughs> um, oh, jeez. I can't think of this book. It's going to drive me crazy. Well, in the meantime, while I'm thinking of that, um, but I want to start diving in and reading some of the classics and just some of the older books. Um, I have quite a few of the older books on finance and uh, just living life. And I'll tell you what, these, these guys from back in the day were so ahead of their time and it's just so worth reading. It is an amazing thing to just... Um, be educated by those way ahead of us and um, I, I just truly believe that part of our struggle is that we've just gotten too busy and caught up in worldly things that are taking our joy away and removing us from the simplicities of life and that's why we embrace this lifestyle that is why when we walk away from this place we will be embracing the simplistic life even deeper maybe even without power. Um, the things of the world have no lore for either one of us. Even the mountain boy, some of it does. As long as he has his games, he's good. Um, but there is something to be said about the simplistic parts of life. You know, we miss out on so much because we're caught up on the wrong stuff. And that's what we need to realize. And I think that's why I have such clarity and ability to keep my joy because I'm not of the world. I have separated myself of the world so I don't have all those things pulling against me that most of you guys do. And I'll tell you, I think you can see it. It is an incredibly pleasurable place to be and I am so thank. Yes, Napoleon Hills, George, that's some of the ones I have. I just saw his note go across the screen. Squirrel! Um, but really, I mean, I think you can see that even though we are dealing with one chaotic and very uh, heavy financial place, we are finding goodness in it. And I don't think that if we were in the world, we would be able to do that. I really don't. I really, really don't. Um, George says, we'll be out that way soon. Good. That means campfire. And Shelly says, the rain you had last night just was a little south of us and misses us. Yeah, and it wasn't much, but it did it did make a difference. You guys are going to die when you hear this. I was so cold yesterday in the house. 
Outside last night, it was really nice, humid even, it was comfortable, but I was so stinking cold, I could not warm up that the mountain man uh, lit a fire for us in the wood stove. Um, our walls are now covered and it holds the coolness so much, I just can't get warm. It was so bad, I was that cold that, that's the dog, that's not me. <laughs> Oh, he's. I think he can feel the vibration of his voice, and he's been doing that a lot lately, rolling around making this growly sound. It's really kind of funny. But anyway, I, I was that cold that when he lit the fire and warmed things up, he's sitting there in shorts and a tank top, and I'm in a uh, jacket and layers and jeans and socks and a, and a, a blanket. But when he finally lit the fire and I thought it started to thaw, you know how when you come in from outside and your hands are that cold and you hit the heat? That's what it felt like. It's crazy. I don't know why I'm that cold, but I am. Um, and George said, uh, Napoleon Hill's books are really good to read. I have a, I have his books, and they are really good to read. I was starting to read those in my level of abundance, and I was jumping from his book to other books. Now I'm reading a book through, so I have to get back to his book. Blame it on the dog. Yes, I did. I don't make those kind of noises. I'm a lady. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to jump on to the next subject. <laughs> um, this is called Peace That I Give to You. How to Experience God's Peace. I thought this was appropriate, So, and evidently so did God. So, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Yeah, um, Kelly says hormone imbalance and thyroid issue. I think my iron dropped, and that is what's causing it. Um, not 100% sure, but I am going to be submitting a test here which I will talk with you guys um, about with you guys next week um, on hair analysis and saliva analysis um, to figure out what is going on in my body and we'll be able to share that with you guys as well what are you doing he's ready to go outside for a WALK I can't say it out loud or my whole house will become disruptive again so anyway here we go Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Then you will experience God's peace. This is really true, guys. I cannot express that enough. I cannot express that enough. God's peace is a wonderful thing, and some of the people around you today are in need of it. It comes when you commit your life to Christ and live by the principles laid out in Scripture. When you commit something to the Lord, you transfer every part of it from you to Him. Peter writes, casting the whole of your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares for you. What a privilege. How, oops, sorry. Have you been availing yourself of it lately? How do I cast all my cares on him, you ask? Through prayer. When you give up what you are struggling with, what is taking up headspace to God, and you give it to God, it's gone if you leave it there. If you leave it in his hands, we have a tendency to pull it back, but I no longer do that. He's got my back. He's walking ahead of me. What are you doing? Um, he's got full control. When you give him full control, um, you can gain your peace and your joy. Trust me. Now, where was I? As soon as you become aware that you're starting to worry and lose your sense of peace, Take it to God immediately and leave it with him. Don't give the devil time to work you over. The longer you wait, the greater his hold over you becomes. But I can't help thinking about it, you say. What can I do? These two things. One, give it to God and then start to focus on other things. It's a learned response. One you will have to practice daily. Paul writes, whatever is true, honorable, honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is lovely and brings peace, think continually on these things. In other words, redirect your thoughts. What have I been saying? Go to Skillshare. Start drawing. Start learning how to take photos. Start learning how to cook. Read a good book. Redirect yourself. And you know what, guys? I, find myself, I found myself doing that a lot that I had to really, really, really focus hard on redirecting over the last three weeks. But you know what? Right now, it's a much simpler process. And the more you practice it, the easier it is. It'll get to the point that you don't even realize you're doing it. You're just doing it. You're redirecting yourself because, man, the enemy will grab hold and he will just keep using different tactics, different efforts to get into your head. And that's why you need to read This Present Darkness, which is uh, treyerwilderness.com slash frankparetti. 
Two, find out what God says in his word about your situation. Then line your thoughts, words, and actions up with it. When you do this, you will experience God's peace. It is so true. And I, that, this is exactly why I am sharing this with you. Because I have found such an amazing place. And I am staying in this place. And I am so thankful for this place. And you need to learn how to uh, redirect and, and refocus and... Use your time wisely and get the enemy out of your place and headspace. Shelly says, if you have low B12, you can also feel cold and tired just like the low iron. Actually, if your B12 is low, you will not absorb. I think you're going to say iron. I'm actually taking a supplement and I'm doing B12. Um, this set in last month too, so I think that it is um, probably exactly on those lines. And uh, I, I am anxious to find out uh, through these tests uh, where things are at because that's going to help me greatly. Um, very inexpensive and something that um, you will get quicker answers, more solid answers on. So that's what we're going to talk about next week because i got to share this with you. And thank you, Shelly. Yeah, exactly. Um, George says, change your thoughts, change your world. Bob Schuler. Yes, that is another great book. And I love it, George. Thank you very much for sharing the books that you are today. And, and that's exactly it. Um, oh, what's the other guy that also talks about that? Um, can't think of his name right now. But it's been, it, it, when, we, when we change our thoughts and learn how to redirect negative energies, um, negative thoughts, and, and also learn to focus on the things that we want to achieve in life. We have so much more abilities to make those things a reality. What, what we focus on, we bring into our life. So if you are focusing on the, the fear and worry of a situation, that's exactly what you're going to bring into your life. If you focus on visualizing what um, a good, for me, I'm visualizing where I am headed. I am visualizing what it's going to be like. I am visualizing the peace of sitting in a rocking chair on a porch overlooking a ranch with a cup of coffee or wine in my hand. Yes, I am. I'm visualizing that lion next to me when I start having negative thoughts going through my head. I just, that is just such a powerful thought to me. Um, learning to visualize is a really good thing. That could be a, it is a great tool in redirecting ourselves. It is a great tool in, in, um, bringing into our lives the things we want, good health, um, more finances, uh, abundance, good abundance, not the abundance of clutter, but abundance, financial abundance. And there's nothing wrong with financial abundance if you use it well and it does it and you stay humble. I could very easily be there and become the next uh, philanthropist. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. So I envision, I visualize that. You know, we have great powers through our thoughts, our visualization, um, and what we're seeking. But most important though, guys, there is so much power in God's word. And I grab my Bible in the morning and I and I ask God to direct me to what I need to read for the day, and I and I open my Bible. And sometimes it's really crazy. Sometimes where He directs me makes no sense in my current circumstance, but two, three days later, dead on. So He never takes you to places that aren't good for you. Um, if you feel He does, you need to realize that's the enemy. The enemy is going to take you where He can rob, steal, and destroy. God will take you to good places. God will love on you. God will send you good things. So keep that in mind. But the Word of God is powerful. It can, it can take you to tremendous places. And I just thoroughly encourage you guys to dive into God's Word. If you've never read the Bible or you've tried and you get caught up in all the these and the thous, um, there's a Bible app. And you can also go to Bible.com. But Bible.com does have an app for smartphones. I live on that thing. Um... And you can choose on, on the computer and on the app what version you're looking at. I like the NLT. It's the New Living Translation. Um, HBSC is another good one that I really like. Uh, the message is out there. Message is funny. Message uh, is kind of like the hippie version of the Bible, if you will, for lack of better terms. Um, it just 
uh, it, it makes the Bible more understandable um, to the average mind. It's funny. when I Sometimes I read that for kicks and giggles. I'll go from the NLT or the King James to the message just to see how they translated it, and it's pretty funny. Um, but find a version that works for you. Find a version that you can read and you understand, and then start with the New Testament. New Testament is powerful. I love the Old Testament too. Um, Psalms and Proverbs are good ones to delve into, but if you're just learning to read the Bible and first diving into the Bible, I don't recommend starting there. It's hard to read. There's a lot of lineages. You get lost in the lineages. And there's a lot of doom and gloom in the beginning of the Bible. But there's also very powerful testimonies there, and that's why it's all shared. But when you start with the New Testament and then also incorporate Psalms and Proverbs into there, um, I love Nehemiah. There's a lot of good books in the Bible, but um, those are my suggestions. And I don't want to keep you guys on here all day. This has been great. You guys are always good at renewing me. God knows what I need to renew myself. Um, these last three days have attacked my health a little bit because it was pretty grueling. <laughs> and like I said, I'll share more with you on that when I can. Um, right now I'm not able to. But uh, it, it definitely wore us out, all of us. Um, but it had purpose, and there was, there'll be good things that'll come of it. So it was worth it. Just need to go now, and I'm going to take a nap after I'm done here because I'm going to be good to my body and let it rest. But, guys, I am so grateful you joined me. It was so great to have a lot of different uh, faces and, and, and names on here than we normally have. And I just want to thank you all for being such tremendous prayer warriors because you have seen the results of your prayers. Also keep Jamie um, Spooner in your prayers. She is the one who lost her son and her husband um, is still alive but was going through some extreme surgeries. Last surgery uh, was Thursday and he had um, major uh, uh, skull repairing that needed to be done. They were in that accident um, on the highway here. Uh, George, thank you very much for joining us today. Love you. Have a great day. Thank you, Terry. And I'm going to say some prayers here quick, but keep uh, Jamie Spooner in your prayers. I haven't heard the results of, of his surgery. Um, I know that he has some extensive injuries. Uh, so, And just the fact that they've lost their son in that same car accident that the husband was with. I just can't imagine their pain there. So just, uh, they are feeling God's grace, though. And keep uh, Kim Johnson and her family in your prayers with the loss of her husband. So I'm going to say a prayer here for us all. Papa, I just thank you for your love and mercies, for your hand of protection, your hand of grace and mercy on us, for loving us. And just wrap your arms around all of those present and all of those watching the replay. Be with those on our prayer list, Jason and Pat, Mark. Uh, Jamie, Tammy and her family, and be with Chad also, be with Mona and Ken, and just be with my mountain man. We all need prayers from time to time, and there is no weakness in asking for prayer. That is, I think, one of the biggest strengths people have is knowing that they need prayer and being willing to ask for it. Uh, so just be with those that are in need and just wrap your loving arms around them. Uh, give us the discernment to realize what's going on in our headspace. Uh, if the enemy is in there playing negative games, that we have the ability to discern that and, and to turn it around. And just give everyone the strength they need to make it through the struggles they are going through. Let them feel your, your peace and your comfort and your joy. And help them to reach where I am with my relationship with you because it is one powerful and amazing place. And I just ask that you keep your hand on everyone. Keep them safe. Keep a hedge of protection on them and just love on them. Help them to be uh, more creative and find creative things to do with their time and to focus on you. And I just love you and I thank you for what you're going to do for all of us and ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for helping to renew my soul and uh, you guys are always so enjoyable. Thank you all for your input and your feedback and, and the books and, and your experiences and, and just loving on each other. So powerful. We have got such an amazing, amazing community. I am just so thankful that God has placed me in this seat to be able to see everything that is going on. I love you all. I wish you all a great day and a 
blessed weekend. We'll see you next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Standard Time, our normal time. And guys, take care. I love you. God bless you.